for sure was probably nine when I moved out to Los Angeles. I was like, yeah, this this could be what I do for the rest of my life. Yeah. I could actually like make money and have a career out of it, you know? Mm -hmm. Both of them just messaged me and was like, hey, like, do, are you down to do a cover? And Hayden is in LA and Matt was in Atlanta. So I flew out to see uh, yeah. Matt in oh, Atlanta wow. and that kind of just happened. And then Hayden, he was already here and we just met one day and it just like, I was already working with the producer that he was working with. So mm -hmm. it kind of was like, it just kind of made sense. Yeah. You know, it's, sometimes it's hard being independent, you know, cause like financial and then obviously like getting your work out there. There's a lot of artists that are, you know, trying to get their work out there. But mm -hmm. I'm really happy being independent. And I mean, it's only, like, I've only released one song. So yeah. who knows what will happen. It's crazy to even think about, like, the next song. What is it gonna, mm -hmm. what's gonna happen? This is Lauren Engel of Sidewalk Talk. Today I'm here with Chanel Loran. <laughs> so you were born in Florida. How do yes. you say it? Pensacola? Pensacola, Florida. Yeah. It's um, close to the Panhandle and close, close to Louisiana. Oh, okay. Um, it's just, I lived in a really small town and, you know, normal life. Just yeah. really normal life. And your parents are from there originally or? Yeah, my mom was born in Tennessee. Um, she moved to Florida before I was born, and I was born there, Pensacola, and raised there up until nine, and I moved to Los Angeles. Okay. And, yeah. What made you guys want to move to Pensacola then? Um, singing. Me. Really? Career, yeah. For, to Pensacola? Oh, no. Yeah, I, I was like, you want to... <laughs> um, I don't know, I just, that's where my mom she, did she Jones. get a job offer there? Or? Yeah, she was she was an insurance agent. She is an insurance agent. Oh, okay. So she just yeah. I don't know. I just was like Pensacola. That's where. <laughs> and what do you say you got your creative side from her? Um, actually, it's kind of weird. My mom, she sang when she was younger, but oh, she was a so cheerleader. Cool. Oh wow. And she had um vocal like her vocal cords had mm -hmm. cancer oh and uh she wasn't able to sing she lost her voice but mm -hmm. um i would say it came from my mom's side because my grand my grandparents were um music teachers and oh. it kind of i guess it kind of came from that side mm -hmm. i don't know but they sang country music and as for me i sing r&b so yeah. it's kind of like i don't know i'd like to think that i got it from my grandparents. Mm -hmm. Did they teach you stuff, like your grandparents, about music? Actually, uh, my grandparents like died when I was mm. two. Well, my great, my grandfather, great grandfather. Yeah. Um, he died before I was born, a long time before I was mm -hmm. born. And my great grandmother, she um, died when I was two. Okay. So, no, I didn't learn much music. Yeah. <laughs> I was mostly like getting like held and kissed and like cuddled. So I wasn't really like. <laughs> Yeah. Wasn't singing at that mm -hmm. time. I was just like learning how to talk and humming. I yeah. wasn't exactly singing yet, but yeah, I would like to think it came from my grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of music was your mom playing in the house when you were growing up? Celine Dion, mm -hmm. um, 90s R&B, Mariah Carey, Aretha Franklin. I was actually like three years old and I was singing You Make Me Feel Like a Natural Woman. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, so I've always been into 90s R&B, okay. divas, R&B divas, mm -hmm. pop divas. Uh, I've always gravitated towards them. I've loved the vocal runs, the technique, and the style of music. So I like to implement that in all my music. Mm -hmm. And back then, were you kind of known in school as like the singer? Like, were you doing like singing contests and stuff? Yeah, I was in recitals. Yeah. Um, I always sang like if my school had like an event like mm -hmm. a musical or anything like I was always like the, the person that was singing I was the singer I sang national anthem and even if I wasn't doing that I feel like yeah. everyone would know because I was humming in class I constantly got in trouble for humming and 
being disruptive, but mm-hmm. like I just that that's how I work. I don't know. I always play music now, even when I'm working on my school. So yeah. that's how I that's how I do it. That's what's easiest for me. How else would you describe your personality back then, growing up? Um, I was very shy. Mm. Believe it or not, like I was very quiet, and I really cared about what other what other people thought of me. So. Yeah, I was. I kept to myself. I had like close friends that I kept in touch with, and you know. But I kept to myself. Singing was my outlet. Music was my outlet. Mm-hmm. Other than that, like that was where I found my creative. Yeah. You know. So music was always there, though. Did you like school? Like, did you do well academically? Um, I've always done well academically. It's just never been like my thing. Like, I've never been like. I've never thought I was gonna be a lawyer. I've never thought I was gonna be a doctor. Mm-hmm. Like all my friends in kindergarten were like, hmm, I'm gonna be a teacher when I'm older. I'm gonna be a doctor, I'm gonna be this. And I'm like, I don't know anything that I'm good at other than singing. Mm-hmm. And there was never like any day that I was like, I'm gonna be a normal nine to five desk job or you know, like something other than a mm-hmm. singer. So. so you didn't really have to study much, it just like came naturally to you? Um, high school, I yeah. had to study a lot, but when I was a kid, I was, yeah, I didn't have any trouble academically, no, mm-hmm. but I was just always, like, music was always on my mind. Yeah, and how did you realize that you could have a career in music, because you didn't really know people around you who were able to, like, live off of it, yeah, right? Yeah, no, um, honestly, um, I started taking vocal lessons when I was three so because my mom lost her voice and she was Mm -hmm. she knew I was gonna be a singer and she was very nervous she didn't want me to ruin my instrument so Mm -hmm. I was practicing and working on that and I feel like when I first thought you know like this is gonna be like what I'm gonna do like for sure was probably nine when I moved out to Los Angeles I was like yeah, this this could be what I do for the rest of my life. Yeah. I could actually like make money and have a career out of it, you know? Mm-hmm. How were you able to convince your mom like at such a young age? I feel like most parents are like, yeah, I just go through college and see if you still love it. <laughs> um, my mom was, has always been my biggest supporter. Yeah. So it really didn't take much convincing. She's always been like, you know what? I want you to have, you know, what I didn't have, like a vocal Mm. teacher so you don't lose your instrument and then opportunities that I didn't get to have when I was younger, you know, so she always pushed me to kind of find out who I, not exactly find out who I am, but find something that I was passionate about at a young age and like stick with it and I was always active as a kid, so when I wasn't doing music I was swimming and dancing. I was always doing something, so it didn't really take a lot of convincing to convince my mom that, hey, I want to be a singer for real. Mm -hmm. Then when you moved to LA, did you know anyone in music? No. No one. (laughs) That's crazy. (laughs) Yeah, no one. It was just me and my mom, and I mean, it's been us ever since, and Mm -hmm. you know, we've met people. I'm 18, so I've basically lived in Los Angeles for half my life. Yeah. Like, I've grown up here. Mm -hmm. Like, it's almost like L.A., like, I was raised here. It's not so much, like, whenever I think of, like, my home, I think of, like, Los Angeles. I don't think of Pensacola anymore. It's weird. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And how are you able to meet the first people in music here? Ah, man. I did a lot of showcases, I remember, like little singing showcases. So you kind of just like signed up yourself? Yeah, my mom, you know, she was really good at, you know, keeping me active, even when we came out here and like trying to find something and, you know, I don't know. It kind of all just fell into place, it feels like. Mm -hmm. So. And when did you start your YouTube and like doing covers and stuff? I started my YouTube in 2007, but I didn't start posting anything until I want to say 2010 or 11. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was really young. Actually, probably even like 2009. Oh wow. Yeah. So I bet I did that for a few years, and then I was like, you know what? I want to focus on my own music instead of covering other artists Mm -hmm. because I felt like I have my own sound that I haven't discovered yet 
you know, and it, like, just being in the studio for all the years that I've been in, like, and writing my own music has, like, taught me that, wow, like, singing someone else's music is, like, so amazing and, like, fun, but, like, making your own is, like, there's no other feeling, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, like, it's way beyond what I could have ever imagined, so. Mm -hmm. So for YouTube, like, were you already gaining a lot of fans from your covers, or? Yeah, I was already getting a lot of, you know, <laughs> action and people that were like, do more, do more, and then I actually did, I collaborated with some YouTube stars that it's have. Like Hayden, or? Hayden yeah. and Maddie B. Yeah. And, um. How did you connect with them? They actually reached out to oh, me. Oh, okay. Both of them just messaged me and was like, hey, like, do, are you down to do a cover? And Hayden is in LA and Matt was in Atlanta. So I flew out to see um, yeah. Matt in oh, Atlanta wow. and that kind of just happened. And then Hayden, he was already here and we just met one day and it just like, I was already working with the producer that he was working with. So mm -hmm. it kind of was like, it just kind of made sense. Yeah. How did you meet like producers early on? Um, connections, friends, yeah. showcases, you know. Mm -hmm. Kind of just like I said, it felt like it fell into place. Like everything kind of just happened. Mm -hmm. How did you meet your management? Uh, my mom's my management. Oh, I'm sweet. independent. Yeah. Yeah. How about with like Impulse artists? Oh, I met that through the producer that um, worked with me on the on my EP that's going to be coming out. Well, what is it like having your mom as your manager? Is it difficult to differentiate between like business and like personal family life? Um, that's a tricky question because honestly, I feel like I'm more of my manager than my mom is. She mm -hmm. just has the title because like she's very like, she really listens to what I, what I think and what I say, which I'm grateful for. I mean, there's been definitely been moments when we've been like, no, that's not, that's not right. And we've disagreed, but at the end, like it always kind of works out and the favor like mm -hmm. what it was meant to be but it's supposed to what it was supposed to happen yeah are you looking for a manager like for the long term i don't know um maybe mm -hmm. i'm i really like being independent right now like i really don't i don't have a label i don't have really a manager so i'm kind of just i have really a lot of creative control yeah to do what i want and you know it's sometimes it's hard being independent you know because like financial and then obviously like getting your work out there there's a lot of artists that are you know trying to get their work out there but mm -hmm. I'm really happy being independent and I mean it's only like I've only released one song so yeah who knows what will happen it's crazy to even think about like the next song what is it gonna mm -hmm. what's gonna happen yeah are you finished with school now like you graduated high school I graduate in June oh nice so what is it actually like, like, balancing school and music? Because you're still doing all these sessions, right? Or you, have you been skipping school? Or No, um, I do online school. Oh, so okay. It's, it's a lot easier, but um, I go to a school that's very, it's very advanced still. And it has like a lot of, like I have a lot of responsibilities still. Um, it's been challenging at some points this is my last semester so i would say you know it's not as hard right now but uh i worked on my EP. <laughs> i worked on my ep in the summer so i didn't really have to worry about school mm -hmm. um and as for having sessions i usually kind of just do those on the weekends or later in the afternoon so that i can get my school done earlier mm -hmm. in the morning since i don't actually have to physically go to a school and I can just kind of do it online. Yeah. It's a lot easier. Is college something you're thinking about or you just want to go straight into music after Oh, you definitely. Um, yeah, I I don't exactly know where I want to go, but I know that I want to go for music, oh, okay. vocal program. Um, you know, I, I, I would just rather learn more about music and, you know, all the things that come with college, the connections, and yeah, I'm definitely interested in going to college. Mm -hmm. I just haven't decided exactly yeah. which one I'm going to yet. Are you scared it will take away the time that you could be focusing on in your career and like putting it all in? Yeah, I have yeah. been. I, I've actually looked at a few colleges that um, one of them was, 
I think five days a week and I was mm -hmm. like how am I gonna have any time yeah. to be in the studio and then my free time and I'm gonna just like and then the two days a week that I'll be free yeah. like I'll be doing homework or, and, yeah you know so yeah I'm I'm scared of that I think that's one thing that I've really made sure to research looking at every single one of the schools and their programs because I definitely want to have a lot of free time for music and, yeah you know I'm still I'm 18 mm -hmm. I have like a lot of experiences and I'm a songwriter too so like that that stems from my creativity like what I'm doing my experiences so yeah it would that's definitely something that I'm not interested in like mm -hmm. going to a school that's five days a week yeah that's crazy is college something that your mom wants you to do or you No, I I really was she scared that you need a degree to back up like a she backup she plan? definitely was um, but I really I really it's my decision like yeah. I really want to go because like I said if I go for music I'm gonna learn a lot of about bo like vocals and then music itself music history um, harmonies song even more about songwriting as well mm -hmm. so yeah something that I'm I've yeah. already decided <laughs> on it's my decision yeah. mm -hmm. and how did you meet um, like Red One because you've been doing like vocals for them right oh um, I used to yeah I'm no longer doing vocals for them I actually met them it's so funny like at a showcase <laughs> I met one of the songwriters at a showcase and she you know was interested in working with me and I did that for about three years and that oh, really wow. like kind of opened my eyes like a whole new world because mm -hmm. I was just like you know working on YouTube and covers and I was already in the studio just in a completely different way yeah and because they're like Grammy nominated but producers yeah, yeah like it was just like yeah. yeah it was super crazy and you know I did a lot of demo work and it kind of somewhat uh, made me realize exactly like oh I, I don't want to just be a a singer I want to be a musician I, mm -hmm. I want to be an artist so I took a break from that I was like hey like I can't do this anymore I got to focus on my own stuff and you know like I'm R&B alternative and Red <laughs> One's very much EDM mm -hmm. more pop so like I just kind of I had to go my own separate way and figure out my sound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Were you acting and stuff as well? I did acting when I first moved out to LA, mm -hmm. mostly because um, it's kind of LA has this whole stigma around it, like oh you have to be an actress, you have to be a triple threat, you have to do all of this, and I did it for a while. I really liked it, and then I kind of realized like, hey, like. I don't love it as much as singing. It would kind of just be like unfair to put my time and energy into something that I'm not 100% mm -hmm. passionate about. So I just was like, you know what? I'm just gonna be full-time focused on my singing mm -hmm. and artistry from were, now on. Were you also, were you going to a lot of auditions for that? Or like, yeah. did it take some time for you yeah. like wanting to get into that community? Cause yeah, I saw your IMDB, you did like a few things. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was a, yeah, from driving to the audition to preparing and, you know, it's just like a lot of time and energy that goes into it and, man, I give actors and actresses their props. It's like really difficult, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, acting and writing a song isn't so different. So, yeah. I mean, I would like to think that all my years prepping and preparing for scenes and scripts and all that stuff really helped me in my music because... Whenever I record a song, I really have to feel those emotions. So mm -hmm. I don't think it was, you know, a waste of time. I think it was something that really helped me grow and figure out who I was. And I'm glad that I did it because here I am now. Yeah. <laughs> so. What are the main inspirations for your upcoming EP? Um, the main inspirations for my upcoming EP are, I mean, becoming... A teenager transitioning mm -hmm. from a 17 year old to an 18 year old it's a lot I mean it's not really a physical like a f big physical change yeah. it's mo mostly just kind of like what other people's can't think of a word but 
the way other people perceive you, mm -hmm. you know? Because, like, suddenly you're just, like, an adult, but, like, yeah. nothing's really changed. It's just, like, a, like, oh, I can get a lottery ticket yeah. and I can vote, but, like, you know, like, it's kind of just, like, am I really an adult? Like, what is this mm -hmm. new responsibility that I have? And then also, it's like, I have a lot of inspirations for firsts. There's mm -hmm. a lot of firsts that I experienced and that I have experienced and that I will experience. So it's just like in my EP, I would like to think it's like a growing pain. Yeah. Like growing pains and <laughs> learning stuff and new experiences and firsts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you have ideas for your music videos? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm already planning a lot of stuff and... I'm already in meetings and talking about it with everyone, so I'm just really excited for everyone to see it and hear the music and, you know, it, it takes a lot of time to get everything done and, I mean, honestly, like, if it was up to me, I would have released all my music the second that I walked out the booth, like, yeah. last year, <laughs> so it's just a process and I've really had to ground myself and keep reminding myself like hey this is not going to happen overnight this is this is a really big deal and you know like just keep positive and keep reminding myself that yeah <laughs> how do you say you've grown as a person compared to when you were younger um i'm definitely more confident now i'm more outspoken mm -hmm. um I'm more of a free spirit, I would say, and I'm, I have no filter, <laughs> um, not anymore. So I've grown a lot from the little shy girl that was in yeah. Pensacola, mm -hmm. yeah. What kind of advice do you have for people who want to be more confident and outspoken? Hmm. Um, man, it's so hard because I was given so much advice mm -hmm. back when I was going through it and like honestly none of it really helped me. Yeah. It was more of like a self journey. Like it was something that no one could really tell me. It was just something that I had to go through. But if I could say one thing, it would definitely be just putting yourself out there is definitely the first step because mm -hmm. I mean, I went from being super shy to like not even not even wanting to get up like in the mall and sing to yeah. I sang in front of a crowd of like 40,000 people and then I w I'm still nervous I still yeah. get nervous before shows so it's like you kind of just have to be like screw it yeah. <laughs> like you have to just go for it because mm -hmm. man life is so short yeah <laughs> it's like life is too short to be thinking what if I didn't do this mm -hmm. and so just taking the first step yeah. and pushing yourself to do it is definitely the biggest advice mm -hmm. I wish that I would have listened to. <laughs> what do you say have been your biggest challenges so far in your life? My life. Yeah. Wow. Um, in my life, yeah. my biggest challenge so far has been being able to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And that's a big thing as an artist. Like, you know, we want, you want to connect with people and tell them your story. And you can't really do that if you're not vulnerable. Yeah. So I've definitely had to work on that a lot. And I think honestly, like within this past year of working on a project that I was like, I'm going to release this because I have like a catalog of songs yeah. that are never coming out. But like, it's just like working on an EP that I'm like, this is coming out and like has really taught me so many things that I never even knew about myself that was like kind of like hidden down deep in there. And I'm like, you know, I'm just tired of keeping all that in. Like I really had to be myself and like quit being what other people wanted me to be. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what a lot of inspiration for Take It, my yeah. single was about, you know, especially in the industry, like, mm -hmm. whenever I did demo work, I was constantly told, like, you know, like, you can't sing R&B, mm -hmm. or you can't do this, or you can't do that, or you're not that, that's not who you are, and, you know, I think that's what this whole EP that's coming out is about, you know, breaking out of 
what other people tell you you are mm -hmm. and finding yourself. Yeah, it's so cool. <laughs> what Thank does you. love mean to you? Love. I've never been in love, mm -hmm. in love, but I've I love my friends. Yeah. I love my family. And I, I generally think I'm a very loving person. So love to me is, man, <laughs> I don't know. Love is just something you can't, love is something you can't see, you can't touch, you can't, it's just there. Mm -hmm. And as a teenager, someone who's every day constantly still working on self-love, I think Loving yourself is always trying to keep up your spirit mm -hmm. and talk yourself higher, you know? Like, remind yourself of who you are and your self-worth and what you can be. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, love is, love is so many different things. Yeah. <laughs> like, what does success look like to you? Success looks like happiness, mm -hmm. you know? So, you can't really determine how successful you are by materialistic things or everyone's version of success is different but for me personally success is just being happy doing what I'm doing and feeling like I have some sort of an impact yeah also you know mm -hmm. and something that I'll always remember and never forget yeah yeah so success is just being happy for me mm -hmm. bless you <laughs> last question what do you want to be remembered for hmm. Sexy. not that <laughs> um i want to be remembered by i want to be remembered for always being kind and passionate and very caring about what happens to our world mm -hmm. and the people on it, everyone, no matter how small they think they are. But yeah, I just want to be remembered for saying what's on my mind and being passionate, a whole lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think I would just want to be remembered for saying what I feel. Mm -hmm. I love this. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye.